I find that bad guys tend to shy away from me. I mean, I, um, case in point, I had an incident once a few years ago, um, downtown Portland. It was after seven o'clock, so it was getting dark out, and it was downtown, so it's kind of creepy town. Um, I was about to cross the street, and I noticed this guy that just did not look right. He gave me the I just the hair on the back of my neck stood up, but I had to go in that direction because my car was in that direction. I said, okay, I see him. I'm going to be aware of What's up, everybody? Welcome to the EDC Guy podcast. I have um, some special guests today. I have Kevin from Heavy Metal Lifestyle 223, and I have Teresa here from King Styles and Giles, and we're going to have a great interview today. So um, I've been following Teresa for a while now on Instagram, and Pretty much, I send a lot of my female students, my women students, over to her page because she has some great fashion tips. Um, she conceal carries. She's a huge part, in my opinion, of the Second Amendment community and conceal carry community. Um, you know, she has that awesome neck knife that she always has around her neck. Um, that's one of the things that Kevin noticed when, um, <laughs> you know, he's like, man, she's the real deal. And I was like, yeah, she's the real deal. So, um, I'm gonna let Kevin introduce himself and then we'll let, uh, Teresa introduce herself. Go ahead, Kevin. Let everybody know who you are. Um, this is Kevin. Um, I guess he just, he just. Gave me an intro. I'm the owner and creator of Heavy Metal Lifestyle. Um, you can follow me at Heavy Metal Lifestyle 223. Um, I'm a clothing brand within the 2A community. Um, it's not what you wear, it's how you live. Um, I started a company designed about, uh, about two years ago, and um, I'm looking forward to 2019. I think it's going to be a big year for me and for us at the uh, for Heavy Metal Lifestyle. Oh, yeah. All right, um, Teresa, could you um, introduce yourself? Just give people an overview of who you are and uh, what you bring to the Second Amendment community. And, um, you know, just like what, what motivates you for your, your brand and your business? Well, I'm Teresa King, and I am the owner of King Style & Guile. We started our business four years ago as the first retailers for King and Can Concealment. And my motivation behind that was I fell in love with the product. And at that time, the product was only available online. And I knew that women want to <laughs> buy on their holsters before they buy it. And that's hard to do when you're shopping online. And so... <laughs> I talked to the owner and she's like, yeah, why don't you work for us? So I grabbed my bag and went down to the Portland gun show and walked up and down the aisles, to talk to people and really enjoyed uh, just being part of the 2A community. I started my uh, concealed carry journey 10 years ago when we first moved to Oregon and I've been learning more and more and developing myself as a uh, armed citizen and I've come to the point where I, I really just want to help encourage women um, 
and guys too to find a comfortable holster system. And then last year we expanded into C4 Concealed Carry Clothing Company, uh, which is another line of holsters that is a, a base wear holster, like an undergarment holster with pockets. Um, and then we also expanded into Paisley Ray Clothing Line, which is a line of women's clothing that I found that works fantastic for concealed carry because of the way that the clothing is cut and the beautiful patterns make concealed carry very easy. And um, it just kind of all came together for us. And I really enjoy it. Right. And um, that's one of the things that I, I, I notice about your page, like you're very passionate about this, but at the same time, people don't realize, and I do um, some con concealed carry courses and, um, you know, uh, certified people to get their concealed carry license. And one of the things that I like to tell them is clothing. Clothing is very, very important. And you bring that element of, of concealed carry, that element, you bring it to the masses. And I love what you're doing because it's like you get people that one stop shop. You know, you can, you, you know, with the women, they could buy their blouse, their pants set, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and match it with their, their holster because that seems to be an issue. And like you said, you, you do help guys too, but you've helped me on a number, in a number of ways where um like patterns you know i'm jumping the gun a little bit but like i learned that by watching you like patterns is very very important because you break up that you know that uh shape that printing that you might have when you you're concealed carrying and i think a lot of people struggle with it but it's that that elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about and i think that you tackle that so well you know, um, and one of the reasons why I have uh, Kevin here too is because you guys are you guys are working in the industry, the clothing industry, and um, I just think that it's very very interesting that you guys um, what what you guys bring to the table, and it's very very important. Again, it might be something totally different because you have like a classic look, and he might have the urbanish you know uh hip hop look but it's also the main element is to be able to conceal carry you know so i think that's 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 amazing um what are some of the mistakes like that you've made when you first started to con conceal carry um i would say that i was very guilty of the the constantly adjusting the shirt and the pants. I think that's pretty common to most people who conceal carry when they start their journey. Is oh my holster moved? I gotta I gotta fix that, or I gotta fix my shirt. I gotta straighten this out because of you know the wind moved my shirt a certain way or what have you. And I think that's very common for most people. So. As I've um, been in, as I've done this business, what I, I try to encourage people who are new to conceal carry is carry at home. You know, um, it, if it makes you feel more comfortable, have your weapon unloaded, but carry your gun around your house in the holster that you've picked, or try out as many holsters as you can possibly try out, but wear it around your house so that you can get used to how the holster feels on you, how it moves with you. Um, does it react well? Does it, you know, if you are a parent with little kids, if you're chasing after your kids around the house, what happens if your gun falls out when you're at home? You know, right. you test these things out so that when you're out and about, you know how your system's gonna work for you or not work for you, maybe be at the case. Right. So, um, how, and I know, I know, um, I know you specialize in like women's clothing. And like I said, like I learned so much from you by just watching. I mean, once the bell went off, like that aha moment, um, I went 
and I bought me a few, you know, plaid shirts and stuff. Cause I felt like I, I discovered like, you know, sliced bread, you know what I mean? I was like, man, like I need to go do this now because I struggled with that. I struggled with printing and, and um, a little bit less now when I, cause I do appendix carry. Um, when I used to carry, uh, do side carry, it used to be like, uh, you know, I felt noticeable, you know, but now that I do appendix carry, it's slightly noticeable, but with those patterns, like those lines that break up the, the outline of the firearm, it's just perfect. It's everything, like everything meshes so well now. So like, what are, what are some of the mistakes that you see men make um, from a woman's perspective that men make on a daily basis when they carry concealed? That's a great question. Um, I, I think we're both still guilty of the, the fidgeting with the clothes. Um, although some, it seems that guys are maybe quite as fit. Um, this. Um, yeah. I can't make it for you, girl. Making use of layers, I guess, would be a good thing for, for guys to, to consider, too. Um, okay. I know getting into the warmer months, people don't really like wearing a whole lot of layers, but um, having, like, a vest or, like, an overshirt really helps a lot, too. Um, one of the things that we have with the C4 Concealed Carry Clothing Company that I'm hoping to bring in is um, Matt magnetic breakaway shirts okay uh, which are like instead of your traditional button down shirt the buttons are replaced with magnets so okay. you can just pull the shirt open and there you go oh that's that's awesome that's very very nice uh so what do you what do you think about that kevin like as as men what do you see us where we where do we make our mistakes at like like i said like for me, I, I'm like that plain guy, you know? And I just noticed that with um, Teresa, she really does the pattern thing and, it, and I think it really helps. Like, what do you think, uh, what, what could we do as men, like when it comes to conceal carry and that, that printing issue? That is awesome. Well, I think um, first, I found out if you have a good holster, some of that printing issue is not a big, it's not a factor, depending on what kind of holster, um, depending on what kind of gun you're carrying, uh, appendix, you know, three o'clock or whatever, you know, sometimes, I mean, appendix carry, you know, it's right there. So depending on what kind of gun, full size, compact, you may, you may have a issue with the printing, but um, layers do help some, but I, I think it was Vertec. Vertec has a, a a pattern shirt, and it has like a I don't know what you want. To, it's like it's pattern. It has buttons, and then it's like two buttons at the bottom are, aren't there, and then they have like a shirt underneath it to to, to kind of make that shirt sit like straight down as far I mean so it don't get flush to your body, so you can't see the printing. It's like a heavier shirt. It's like having a a thin shirt, but then having a heavier shirt underneath that shirt, so it'll hang. And um, I think they did that too, so you don't, so you can be more concealed and covert. Um, you know, you know when you're carrying your everyday carry. I right. think that was the reason why they did that shirt. I seen them at like a couple of gun stores around in, in Michigan, and I thought, and I also looked them up um, just to see how they were made and and you know, watch some people wear them on you know some YouTube videos. So I'm assuming that the second shirt behind there kept the uh, printing down because it was a heavier shirt. Um, okay, cool. You know, so, but you know, I'm a I'm a big boy, so my print comes from my belly. So it's just, <laughs> you know, you got that belly issue. <laughs> so, but um, go ahead. Yeah, that's uh. So that's sort of what what uh Teresa was saying that um, we got to focus on that layering, you know, so that, that eliminates that, that printing. 
Um, so that's that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, well, I wasn't when she, when you brought to me about the patterns. I, I mean, I, that was something. I'm like, okay. I started thinking about like, dang, okay. You know, my wife always talk about patterns on women to throw off whatever, whatever, whatever. And I was just when you told me about it, I asked her about. It. She said, "Yeah, that makes sense. You can you can throw off a um a printing of a shirt with a pattern and all that." I was like, "Dang." I'm trying to the hard thing with me and patterns because I deal in like t-shirts, so I gotta find I gotta design a pattern in the shirt. Yeah, that right. That off. Or no, or get us, you know, because I'm screen printing and and different. You know, I'm not cutting and sewing yet. Um, meaning like putting a building a shirt from scratch. Right. But um, I am looking into full shirts with full patterns, like all over shirts that are gonna have some patterns in it to you know kind of throw that off. Because once you know I started looking at what she was doing, I was like, okay, you know, let me let me look into this a little bit more. Right. I'm telling you, like I'm I'm inspired, man. I told you I discovered like sliced bread, man. I'm I'm there now. Um, so, um, so like real quick, Teresa, like, I noticed like in your pictures, you have like, um, you have that tape measure there a lot of the times and stuff. So like, do you do like alterations to clothing or do you, you know what I mean? Do you, um, recommend certain things to women that they can do? Or do you find that the brands that you, um, you officially have in your, your, your store, they're they're pretty much complete. So the tape measure I use because when primarily for um, working with customers in person and determining the holster size. So particularly with can can concealment, we have um, the hip huggers and the sport belts, and those are uh, basically upgraded versions of belly bands and those are based on your hip measurement. So I use the tape measure to measure people so I can figure out what size works best for them. Uh, what I love about all the companies that I work with is that we're all, they're all made in America, all sourced in America and all using um, American uh, products. So the beautiful part about that is that the holster companies that I work with can do custom orders. So when I have that customer that either is not within the size scale that we have, whether they be really, really tiny or a big, big person, I can still get them a holster even if it's not on my standard size chart. So that's one of the biggest things that I love about with American companies is that I can do custom orders. Um, if you have, say, with the can can concealment, we have three different styles of holsters based on the size of your firearm. So if you have a like an NAAA revolver that would go in our micro line, whereas something more of a compact size like the MP shield would go in our classic line. But if you want a holster that can fit both of them, that would be a custom order and we're happy to do it. Um, that's that's yeah. awesome. Love doing customizations. Okay. Um, so do you have any of those items with you like um, that you can show people? Um, yeah. Um, it's just a podcast. I see this <laughs> Yeah. So I do have... Um, most of the holster is handy right here. Uh, for example, this is our Hip Hugger Micro. Right. This is going to be for your little NAA revolvers, your LCP, TCP, bodyguards. It's four inches military grade elastic for stretch, very strong and durable, but it's woven so it molds to the body. It's not like those harsh, stiff bands. There's four holsters, two in the front and two in the back for right and left handed draw. Right. Three utility pockets for the wallet, spare magazine, and cell phone. There's two rows of non-slip tactigrip on the underside to keep the garment in place. Oh. And then the front holsters have rare earth magnets for magnetic weapon retention. So if you get turned upside down, your gun doesn't fall out. Okay. And then you need to can can concealment are the reholstering tabs to safely holster your gun. That way you're not digging in the holster pocket with your off hand and uh, risk muzzling your off hand. 
our hip huggers are paper cut for women's hips with hook and eye closure. Right. And so did you, is that, is that your design from the ground up or you just use the, that holster cover because they, they fit, um, you like their holster. Did you design it with them or is that just something you start using? Just something that I started using. So, um, can can concealment is the manufacturer and they're based out of florida and uh -huh. i'm a surprise retailer for them and it's can can concealment mm -hmm. okay that's that's pretty awesome and i noticed um and this is something that's very important because i saw that you posted i think it was something in your stories today where unfortunately a uh, father lost his life uh, because he was fidgeting around and the firearm went off and it shot him and, and his daughter, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be an issue. I think a lot of people off body carry um, because it's uncomfortable sometimes, you know? Um, also, also, um, you know, there's that safety issue, that safety aspect where you, um, you're leaving your, some people leave their firearm just open without being guarded or anything. And something gets into that trigger guard and it's, it's over and done with. Mm -hmm. There's no taking that, um, that bullet back at all. Yeah. And that's, that's the unfortunate part. Um, you know, I, I, I strongly advocate for on body carry because I believe that if it's not on your body, then it might as well be locked up in the safe. But I do understand that there are times where you just can't carry on your, on your person for whatever reason. And I think that if you're going to use an off body bag, purse, what have you, you at minimum need to have that in some kind of holster. I would, I would prefer, I would re I recommend like a Kydex holster. Um, if there isn't, at least if there isn't a dedicated pocket for you to put your gun in, um, because he, you don't want to have that um, gun loose in that bag where something can get to the trigger guard and boom, there you go. Um, it is very sad. There are lots of products out there that are either designed for concealed carry. So there's like concealed carry purses, there's concealed carry, um, <clears throat> excuse me. There are um, like uh, portable pad folios and things like that that are designed for concealed carry. But there's also other options. There's the pack and neat insert, which is a it's a holster, but it also has extra pockets so that you can organize your purse. So it's a combination of a holster and purse organizer, and you can just take that insert and you can put it in any kind of purse or any mm -hmm. kind of bag. And oh, your that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. I, I mean, and I didn't know about that. And I mean, and that's another thing too, like um, the fact that you showed the CanCan -Can concealment holster, it has a lot of features compartments for your cell phone, your, your, your wallet or your ID and things like that. Um, and it's something that's simple and easy. And you know, with dealing with people, ev everyday people, you know, if it's not really simple, they just uh, shy away from it, you know? So that's something that's really good. Um, do you have any other items with you? Uh, that you can uh, show? Yeah, so the uh, Hip Hugger Elite was the one uh, that Can Can Concealment produced starting this year. Um, I think this one kind of maybe had something to do with me a little bit because I was regularly asking for a holster like this because a lot of people are being, most people are dominantly right-handed. So we've got our right-hand holsters for front and back no, 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 no. And uh, there's a spare magazine or a uh, cell pocket on the right hip, spare magazine pocket at six o'clock. 
the back left holster pocket was replaced with a Velcro pocket so you can stuff uh, your keys in here. You can attach your keys here and then you can stuff them in here if you don't want them dangling or you can put other um, small items in here. Uh, if I'm walking my dogs, I would probably put my doggy do bags and treats in here and then I can Velcro that close. You can put your cell phone on this side and then the front left pocket was replaced with a zipper pocket. So you can put your cash, your cards in here and zip it close and not have to worry about falling out of your pocket because sometimes things will work their way out. Absolutely. And this, with holsters like this, I've been able to go purseless for the last three and a half years because I'd rather have all of my valuables in something like this on my person than have them in my purse. Now, I don't wear a purse anymore, but when I did, I would have just like makeup, if that, or, you know, snacks, because I'm always snacking. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, um, and in talking with uh, different law enforcement officers, they really love the idea of getting your valuables in an on-body system, and then you can use your pockets for stuff that isn't critical to what you need. Right. And that's one of the things that I noticed too when um, when I carry uh, concealed, like, you know, you want to have your pockets empty. You can't have like bubble gum in them and stuff. It's like, it's only for like, for me, it's like flashlight, my blade, um, all that other stuff, man, you, you, you guys got to go, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and that's the, that's the seriousness of it all. And I noticed that you, um, you wear the neck knife. Um, mm -hmm. so that's your system. Like, um, how does that fit into your system? Like in the state of Oregon and Washington, it is not legal to conceal carry a fixed blade. Okay. And since I don't wear a purse. Uh, I've gotten used to carrying my neck knife and okay. this just makes it so much easier and from a defensive standpoint I can draw this real easily if I need to and create that distance to get at my gun if I have to. Okay that's that's interesting man um because here in Florida we are allowed to carry we can we can carry whatever we can conceal <laughs> uh, <laughs> And and I mean that, man. I mean that if if it's if they could if they could conceal a Mac Ten or whatever it is, it's they'll put it on their body. And you know, people, you know, it's it's funny because I just posted. I saw a post where a guy had a, um, I guess you want to call it rubber rubber bands or Ranger bands, and he had like I think a revolver up under his arm. So I think people were like. Um, you know, picking on that picture saying that that's stupid, but at the same time, if we talk about layers, right, um, and you're talking about somebody that wants to get in and do somebody harm or, you know, through security, if he had on a long sleeve shirt and you have somebody that's doing like a half ass job, like searching a person, you know, they miss this, you know, and I'm sure, I know we've seen that infamous video where this guy, he's standing there and he's like, barely touching the guy and he sends them on their way he does like it's like 10 10 people in like 10 seconds boom you know and he he's doing a half-ass job somebody like that can can um you know get in you know so that's um that's very interesting um and you're in you're you're in uh washington state correct i'm in oregon or oh oregon okay mm -hmm. oregon She's yeah. the duck. She's in the Oregon Ducks. <laughs> yeah. So, if I follow sports. Um, so um, how long have you been concealed carrying, right? And then, like, what's your favorite firearm to carry on you? I've been carrying for 10 years. Um, and my favorite would have to be DOT, my Springfield XD subcompact. Okay, cool. And how much um how much rounds does that hold? Um nine plus one with the short mag, twelve plus one with the extended mag. Okay, cool. Um what about you, Heavy? What's your what's your concealed carry? 
Uh, it all depends. I kind of like my Glock 26. I like the little shorty Glock 26. Other than that, I got I'm carrying my M&P, not my M&P 2.09C, the compact boy. Okay. It's only, that's probably the only two. That's the only two I carry, unless I can carry my Glock 23. But that's just like in the winter time. So it all depends. Like um, however I'm feeling, kind of clothes I'm wearing. If I'm you know stepping out. Uh, I might wear it, rock the 26. If I'm, you know, just la- lounging, I'll probably rock the uh, 2.0. Okay. Yeah. And those, you, those two are my go-to. And that's that's um that's very interesting that you say that because it just it does sort of change. I'm I'm stubborn, man. I'm stubborn. Um, I, you know, I do have my um, Smith and Wesson Shield nine millimeter, but I just I'm not loving the trigger on that. Uh, at all you know so that's like only in like desperate times like if I'm like real formal and I have my um alien gear uh holster alien wear holster gear and um I got I think it's called the cloak and the super tuck so I could tuck my shirt in and stuff like that but on a regular basis every single day is my Glock 19. I I'm I'm stubborn man I try to make it work but I know that you um, you do want to adjust your clothing and everything like that. Your fire, with your firearm and stuff like that. And I see that with um, with you, Teresa. Like um, because there's it's amazing. Like there's different like fashion. Like you have so many different types of styles um, that you you see on a regular basis in your gallery. Like one day you're wearing like the nice uh, dress that you're wearing there, and then there's uh, you have those nice pants or, or or slacks that you're wearing, and sometimes they're like fitted, but you know what I mean. Like so, you might with your dress, you might have that that inner thigh holster, or you might have the uh, waistband holster with those slacks and stuff like that. So it's very very interesting, and I love that uh, versatility that you bring and that you show um, on your gallery because people need to see, see this, women need to see this because we're in an industry that doesn't really cater to women. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, a lot of the times it's like, you know, Olive Drab, uh, Coyote Tan, you know, all these other things, but you're bringing like the, the red, the blues, the flowers to this. And it's, it's very refreshing to see that, you know, you know what? And that's funny that you say that ever since I got into the game, all I kind of wear is like tan FDE black. I'm just like, man, I don't wear that. It's like you, it's like you gravitate to that because you know, you carry a gun like, well, I'm going to wear all these army colors. Or, you know, I'm like, nah. And that's and one thing I'll be trying to get away from with my stuff, just the colors. I'm trying to – every color I wear, but outside of that is, you know, bright, bright colors or blues or this. I don't – I try I try to stay away from the blacks and the tans. But I got a lot of – I got a lot of black and tan army green T-shirts. And to tell you the truth, too, like with, um, with Teresa, right, so – um, I was told that, oh, I could tell you're a shooter because I could tell by the shirt, I could tell by the hat, I could tell by the shades, you know what I'm saying? And I I, I didn't like that because I don't want to be picked out of a crowd. I want to be normal. I want to look normal, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's another thing that I see that you you bring to the Second Amendment community. Like, you're really a concealed carry connoisseur like you really I'm I that's just what I pick up from your your you know following you for so long you dress like a normal woman like you know what I mean so it's no you are concealed carry all the way you know I don't know if anybody's ever told you that or you know but that was a very that's a very profound point that we as men a lot of the time look at my back Look at my back. <laughs> people are gonna, people know already. I got the the Molly here, but like you know, you 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 you've shown that other side, the softer side. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. 
Let me ask you something, Teresa. So, I mean, I see that you do a lot of, you know, carrying with the holsters and the, the leg carry. Do you – how much training time have you had prior to carrying, you know, the firearm like that? Because I seen, I seen one video that you were – getting right to it, like a pin is carrying and, and, and come right out the holster mm -hmm. from that belly, that waistband. Uh, how much training have you had? Um, I try to dry fire practice every day uh, when, I, when I'm dressed for the day. Uh, I try to do 20 reps of just um, draw and aim shoot. You know? <laughs> I do the same thing. My wife be like, what are you doing? I said, I got to make sure I can get to it. I can't exactly. just put these clothes. I can't put these clothes on. I can't get to it. And I, I do, I do actually quite a bit of dry fire with my garter. Um, and I'm starting to get to the range more. Uh, unfortunately, over the last how many years, it's been it's been a little tough for getting into the range. But I've been focusing more on getting it in. And so um, I did post a video a couple of weeks ago of uh, range time with the garter. Yeah. So that was fun. Uh, unfortunately, the video that I thought I recorded while I was there didn't record. So <laughs> I didn't get all of that. But um, I'm trying to get more live fire time on there. I don't have a whole lot of live fire time on the garter, but I do well, have a lot of dry fire time on it. One, one of the things that I've seen, too, like you're, you're like constantly, like your dry fire schedule is like – you know, it's on there. It's on the money. And um, dry fire is life, man, you know. And you really fine-tune uh, fine tune everything. Like, um, could you tell the, the, the viewers and listeners, like, um, the tools that you use for the dry fire? So I have I, – I use two different phones. I use my current – phone and then I have an old phone that no longer has a SIM card working in it but uh, prior to that we had already downloaded the uh, free app that comes with the iTarget Pro system. It's a laser cartridge that you can insert into your firearm and then um, it, the company you can order a sled and a target for that and you aim at the target, and when you pull the trigger, the laser hits the target, and the shot reports on the phone. Uh, separately, on my phone, I downloaded a free dry fire timer app, and you can put in what you want for your par time, how many seconds you want in between each, rep, each uh, shot, and how many reps you want. And so I just set that up for a two second part time with, I think I'm at, I think I just put seven seconds on there for in between and 10 rounds. And so I take a picture after each set of 10 that I do. Okay, cool. Um, and that's- the phone, pick, the phone picks up the uh, dry fire? Yeah, so uh, on my old phone, it, it picks up the, the shots. It, it actually records your shots as you take them. So you can uh, see what your pattern was after when you're done with all of your rounds. See, maybe uh, you can, um, um, Ron, she can text you all that information. You can post it on the on the video site at the bottom so that people know what it, what she's talking about. Absolutely, man. I'm a, like I'm the apps and the holster. I just looked up the app while she was talking. <laughs> yeah. I it, mean, the, um, the holster place. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely going to do that. Um so I had a question for you, right? Um Teresa, so I'm going to mention a word and you're going to tell me like your thoughts on that, okay? And then I'm going to tell you why I mentioned that word. So the reason why I'm going to mention this word is because you 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 showed a video I think or a photo in your stories of this guy, and he had like a trillion and one scratches all over his body. I don't know if you remember that. Um, he was like he he got caught. He was uh, he got caught. Um, he was um, he tried to rape this woman, or I don't know if he was successful, but he had scratches all over his body. 
You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. they said it lasted for like a few hours, you know? And I remember one of the things that you said was, that's why I mm -hmm. carry a firearm. So the word is mindset. Like, tell me what that means to you. I think mindset is is really what is at the core of concealed carry. It's not, oh, I have this gun, it's gonna protect me. I don't believe that a gun is an equalizer. The, the very first thing that really has to be in place is your mindset. And that is that no matter what happens, I go home. That's been drilled into my mindset for as long as I've been carrying is that you have to approach the world with that belief that no matter what happens out there, I need to make sure that I go home to my family, to the people that I love. And um, sorry, I have um, some family issues going on right now and we're getting a little thick, mm -hmm. but um, you know, it's all about knowing what your abilities are, protect yourself. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a sad thing when a pizza can get delivered to your house sooner than the police can even show up, you know? Right. So being a petite female who happens to be cute, you know, I'm, I'm a prime target for bad guys. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, it's like, if I don't get into the mindset of I have to protect myself, then that sets me up to be an easier target for those bad guys. So when you carry yourself in the mindset of I'm going to protect myself, I've got stuff to do. I find that bad guys tend to shy away from me. I mean, I, um, case in point, I had an incident once a few years ago, um, downtown Portland, it was after seven o'clock. So it was getting dark out and it was downtown. So it's kind of creepy town. Um, I was about to cross the street and I noticed this guy that just did not look right. He gave me the, I just, the hair on the back of my neck stood up, but I had to go in that direction because my car was in that direction. I said, okay, I see him. I'm going to be aware of him. So I crossed the street and I could hear him talking behind me about how he thought I was so pretty and how I had such beautiful long hair. And then he started saying things about, boy, I'd really like to start doing blah, blah, blah. And I, whoa. So I reached under my shirt, put my hand on my gun. I didn't flash it to him or anything. I turned around and I said, excuse me. And he realized at that moment that I was not a sheep. Exactly. Eyes popped out and he left. You know, um, the biggest thing that I, I try to help women is you got to use your voice. You you need to stand firm in that I will not be taken advantage of, and you know, convey that to them. Absolutely. Um, and I, I did a, um, I did a podcast episode and it's called a woman's situational awareness. And that's a very, um, that's a very, uh, serious topic to me because, um, I think you guys are targets when you go out, you know, when you're, you know, we're in one place and you guys are in another place and you you're doing your shopping or doing whatever it is that you have to get done for the day. And, you know, just to learn that these predators, they, they, they practice, they, they train too, you know, um, you know, the different types of, of setups that they'll use to, to ambush you, you know, um, not just you, but they'll do it to men too. But, on a on a regular basis you guys are what what they're they're after most of the time so you're right you do have to use your voice and um the special guest that i had on the sh on on my um podcast 
she was talking about um, being at the train station, you know, public public transportation, right? And you know, she walks into the train station and uh, she noticed this guy, just like how you notice the guy, the hairs on the back of her neck stood up and she knew something wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? And this guy, he, he followed her. He followed her. Like, you know, it's one of those things like, am I being too, am I being over, am I over exaggerating here? Is this what this really is? And sure enough, like everywhere she went, he went to the point where she was finally able to lose. She used her voice and turned around. What is it? What, what do you want? And then he motioned like for the time, I don't have a watch. And then she walked, but it coincidentally, the, um, the elevator opened and she was able to make it inside and it closed and she made it up. But, you know, you could see that this guy, like, tried to, like, run up the stairs or, or something like that to, to catch her. But she was already long gone by that time because there was no security around, you know, to, 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 protect, to protect anybody, you know. So these guys, they exploit that, that, um, that opportunity and they're going to take advantage of that. So that's very, that's very, um, you know, important that women be able to use their voice, but also to have that force multiplier, you know, and be ready to use that because those were fighting words. When he said what he said to you, it's game on now, you know? So that, that's very, that's, that's a very, um, and I, and I, and I said this, anybody listening to the podcast, use this opportunity to think back in your mind when something like that has happened because we've all had incidences that didn't sit right with us and we got to be able to use that to um help us in the future would you agree with that um heavy yeah definitely always be an asset not a liability that's how i look at it yeah so um, my next question was off body carry, but you answered that question earlier on. <laughs> so, um, hey, hey, Teres, Teres, so out in Oregon, I mean, for people, viewers or women that may be watching that's from that area, do you suggest like groups to go out in like an organization or a company to go out and uh, train or shoot with or who have you trained or shot with out there? Um, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to do much tr formal training in the last couple of years. Um, I know Threat Dynamics is a good place, and I think it's Red Frog. Um, that's why, that's why I don't, that is why I don't. I haven't had a chance to really look into local training because, um, there isn't really anything local to me directly, like within an hour, but like, well, I mean, I, I can go to Portland. <laughs> my, <laughs> my schedule gets a little crazy between working full time and running this business on the side and trying to train and stuff. So tell me about it. <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah, I, I am. I am looking into training again. My, my initial training was done at the Klatskin I Rifle and Pistol Club with uh, Greg Smith. Uh, unfortunately, he's no longer there, um, but uh, there's also a queso gun in queso out of uh, St. Helens that I've worked with a bit. Come on, come on, right yeah, and that, 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 um, that's what everybody has to deal with on a daily basis. Like, you know, just being normal people, like, um, you know, on the, on the podcast or the IG Live uh, interviewing Heavy, just asking him on you know, do he plan on going full time with what he's doing? Because we have our, we have our jobs, you know what I mean? And it can get in the way of training on a, on a regular basis. I would love, I envy those guys, man. I envy them so much that they could train. This is what you do on a daily basis. That's life, man. I, I, I want that, you know what I mean? But the, again, talking about your dry fire schedule, you know, 
that really helps to, you know, keep you, do you feel that that dry fire has really helped you? Like, so when you go out to the range and you pull from that holster for, for the first time and you take that live shot, like you feel like you're there. How, how yeah. is that? Yeah, I, I think dry fire really has helped a lot. I, I noticed that my draw is a lot smoother and a lot quicker. Um, and I feel like I can, I can really, uh, get a good handle on that. Um, so yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's always, uh, room for improvement and, and more things to do, but I'm also, uh, since I've been on IG for a year now, I'm also finding more, more people to follow, um, that have given awesome tidbits like, uh, uh, knockout bites and, um, uh, Tony Cowden and, uh, there's, there's a lot of awesome instructors out there that I follow. So I, I, I try to spend a little bit of time each day looking up what they posted that day so I can yeah. try and learn what I can from them. And uh, I, you know, if, if I had one dream right now, it would be to sell everything that we have right now yeah. and buy a land coach and a trailer and take our business full time guys and selling holsters and all this awesome clothes because I know that um, in the umpteen million Facebook groups that I'm in probably the number one thing that I see is I wish there was a place that I could try on all these holsters and if I could like just expand my business to the point where I had a bunch of different holster companies I would just love to be able to be a concealed carry boutique mobile so that I can just pop in at whatever town and be like, okay, you can try on like 15 different holsters here. You know, that yeah. would be awesome for me. Cause I think that, you know, that's a big struggle for a lot of people is finding that holster that actually works for them. You know? right. Yeah. You go through a bag. Of, I got a bag of holsters now and I probably only wear one. I probably got 15, 16 holsters in a bag right. and, and I only wear one now. It all depends on competition work, but I got some competition hosts. But other than that, it's just like basically one. And let me tell you, man, and again, um, going off of what Heavy said a while ago, um, when he talked about like the quality of your holster, it's very, very important to conceal carry. So, you know, talking to people and consulting with people on a daily basis, you know, they ask me, hey, what do you think? Oh, I want to buy this holster. It, it's a really cheap holster. And I was like, man, you can't go cheap on the holster, man. You can't go cheap. Do not get the Uncle Mike's. Do not get the pancake holster. Do not get that, uh, what is it, uh, Ace holster. Stay away <laughs> from it, man. Invest, 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 you know, as well as, you know, your belt. You know, the holster and belt goes hand in hand. And again, like a system sturdy, like the Can Can holster, perfect. Like it fits not to your body, you know, you got that nice protection over the trigger guard. It's stable. It ain't going to be slouching over. And oh my God, that's on a daily basis. People want to go cheap, the everyday person. So that's very, very important. And I think that's a cool idea because I have a, I have, I have some holsters from when I first started concealed carrying you know, trial by error, they're there. They're never, they'll never see this, the night of day, the light of day any anymore. It's over. It's a wrap. And I don't even, I'm not going to sell them or anything because I don't think that they should be out there on the market necessarily. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So you're, you're right. And I think that would be a great thing to just like, Go across country and do that. That that's awesome. Yeah, my other motivation is that I want to go see things. You know, I want to go see the Grand Canyon and the, um, you know, Mount Rushmore, and I want to be able to hike those 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 trails while I'm still, you know, in in a good shape. I don't want to wait until I'm retired and old and rickety and be like, wait, let me get my my walker. You know. Exactly. Exactly. That's um. That's very important. So what would what advice would you give women who want to start training? Um, you know, I, I, I can only imagine that in a world 
that's dominated by okay. men, um, the intimidation that might be, you know, you being married. Um, so I know that we as men cannot show our wives, our girlfriends, we cannot go to the range with you guys. It just doesn't work. So what worked for you? <laughs> uh, when when I actually first moved to Oregon and we, we looked into our concealed handgun licenses and I called the Klatsk and I Rifle Pistol Club, I spoke with Greg Smith. He was the first one that I talked to and, and I asked him about classes and he's like, and you're coming too, right? And I was just lucky to find a, a male instructor that was very supportive of women in, in, in firearms. And so mm. I think as women, the, I would suggest looking into each of the instructors that you have available to you and talking with them to see what kind of vibe you get from them because everybody's different and you know we all have different personalities and yes there are a lot of men that are very supportive of women in firearms but on the flip side of that there are also a lot of men that aren't supportive of women in firearms. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So before you sign up for a class, you know, take the time to talk to the instructor and get a vibe, get a feel for what their, their thoughts are. Ask them how they feel about women carrying guns. And if you're not comfortable with that initial contact with them, go to the next instructor. Um, I tend to be a very um, a sort of aggressive person, so uh, I... And I've always been kind of a, well, if you don't like it, too bad kind of girl. So I, I kind of tend to be it's a little bit easier for me to, to get along with guys than it is for some women, I guess. Right. <laughs> so that's, 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 <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, that's, that's amazing. Um, so just to, just to wrap it up, like, um, Let me, I got a question for her. Since since she, you say you started a clothing line four years ago. No, I started the Can Can Concealment line. I started with Can Can Concealment line four like four years ago. So how how has the you know the 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 clothing part been going for you with the you know the, the, the shirts with the patterns and all of that? Um, it's going okay. Uh, I'm still you know, uh, still trying to find my niche with that. Uh, we're getting better though. Um, this Casey Ray is an independent clothing line uh, of, it's a direct sales clothing line. And it's really just a women's uh, casual to dressy clothing. But the way that I spin it is, is with the concealed carry aspect. And so, it, you know, because the women's concealed carry market is expanding, we're, we're slowly picking it up. Well, it's, it's taking a little time, but um, I'm excited to see how this year goes. Right. And I think that's the, I, and like I said, I thought that was so brilliant to be able to do that because it is rocket science. You know what I mean? Especially when you, when you first start out it's rocket science. Like, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. So, um, you've, you're, you're, you've taken a lot of the guesswork out of it, you know? So, and, and that's, that's amazing. And then also that versatility that you have, not only with the, the holsters of, um, you know, body placement, but also with the, the fashion, the colors, the everything, like you said, and just like looking normal, not looking like a military person or a law enforcement person or somebody who concealed carries, like you keep that element of surprise. You're the last person that anybody would suspect to be ready to throw down, you know? I don't know. She wear that night nap, that night, <laughs> that, that, that the knife on the neck. I, I'm not gonna ask any questions. I'm just gonna keep walking. She, that's already. That's that's I'll let you know that she ain't she ain't about she ain't about no game. Exactly. So like, what's next for um King Style and Giles? Like, what what is the next frontier for you? Um, entering into 2019, into 2020. 
that you want to tell your um your followers and customers and fans? I think uh, I think we're just gonna keep pushing along, and uh, my hope is actually to bring in more holsters to yeah. along with the clothing. Uh, with Paisley Ray, we do uh, seasonal styles, so there's always different kinds of tops and and pants and skirts and different kinds of dresses coming out. So as far as the clothing aspect goes. They've pretty much got that taken care of for me, so I can just pick out whatever clothes I like. Um, and I, I try out, I test out the new clothes that, or the new products that they put out to see how well it works for concealed carry before I add it to our boutique. But my hope is to uh, continue to expand the holster aspect of our business. Particularly, I want to bring in more of the, of the men's holsters, um, like the shirts and everything. And um, I want to work on continuing to improve my page to make it more user friendly and more informative and more helpful to people. Okay. Um, so um, where can where can uh, they find you? Where can anybody find find you? So we do have a website. It's just kingsstyleandguile.com. And on my website, I do have a link to our business page. Our, our, where I post my show schedule because I do uh, uh, set up at local gun shows and I also set up at vendor events locally. Um, I've been invited to different well armed women chapter meetings, um, a girl in a gun meeting. So, um, there's that and then you're certainly welcome to reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram I also do parties so if any of you ladies want to host a party and I will bring our inventory and you get a discount on what you want to buy based on how many sales are at your party okay that's cool um heavy metal life what's where could they find you at and what you got going on coming into 2019 and 2020? Man, um, I'm trying to, right now, the website is heavymetallife.com. The IG is heavymetallifestyle223. Um, they can find me. I don't. I have a Facebook, but it's not really, I don't really do much on Facebook. I do more on IG. So if you want to contact me, they can DM me at heavymetallifestyle223. Um, I'm re I'm reworking the, the website. I'm trying to get more products up and streamline um, production so customers can get a more variety of options for our shirts. Um, I got something brewing, man. You know, it just it just worked. So um, I got some things brewing coming up. Uh, I'm trying to get more shooting on, more videos up of us. Um, getting some work in, um, talking to people, more classes, hitting more classes. And um, I don't know, just all involved in the 2A community as much as I can, as much as I can put my brand out there, um, doing IGs, talking with you, um, events, um, whatever. Wherever I can get heavy metal lifestyle in, that's where I'm going to be at, try to be at. All right, cool. So – for me, you guys can reach me at uh, www.theedcguy.com or you can go on Instagram, the EDC Guy 073, and that's the same thing for YouTube, the EDC Guy 073. And I have my um, self defense book, The Quick Guide to Everyday Carry for Self Defense, is a pretty good um, book, um, a little guide. And then also I have the the brands here that you guys can go and check out as well and then also working on a kids farm safety book so um heavy metal he's uh working with me on that and it should be out real soon and i hope to make some major impacts on the uh second amendment community and in the community across the country as a whole um because we got to protect the uh the little kids and that's going to be under the EDC Guy Academy kids. So you guys check us out. Remember, go visit Teresa 
and go visit uh, Kevin from Heavy Metal Lifestyle 223 and you won't be disappointed. All right. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Teresa, for um, showing up. I love this uh, interview. This was a dream come through true for me. Um, I love your, your, I love what you're doing. I, you're, 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 you're amazing. And I'll see you guys next time.